line pages, and our group is focusing on the topic of control of words on insect abundances. And our question is, do predators have an effect on prey abundances? So some preliminary questions that we are going to cover is, what is top-down control? Why bomb and side pattern? What birds are involved? And what birds are involved? <laughs> okay, so um, what is top-down control? Uh, top-down control is basically um, where top predators in the food web control the trophic levels below them. Um, you guys already heard uh, Devin's group give our example, so I'm not going to bother you with this. Um, a more local example could be, for example, um, in our coral reefs where removal of top predator, predators such as sharks usually result in an explosion of um, algae. And that happened, uh, that's a study in Australia. And the way that works is that because the top predators are removed, like sharks, for example, in this case, it's the sea otter, um, they, it, that leads to an increase in mid-level predators such as snappers. Um, and that results in a reduction of herbivores, like parrotfish. That can be applied to Guam's reefs as well. Um, and because there are no herbivores, or you know, very lower, a much lower level of herbivores, um, it causes a trophic cascade where um, algae will be left unchecked. And that's kind of what we see that's happening here. And there's a few studies on that as well. Why go on in second? So in order to do our experiment, we chose the two islands because they have similar habitats on both islands. Uh, the karst the cars limestone and um, what do you call it? It also has a good scenario where on Guam there are no birds and on Saipan there are still birds that we can that we can compare the two. So it created the perfect model. The birds that were involved were insectivorous birds. Here we have on the left is the White throated turtle ground dove, or turtle dove. And then in the middle we have the Rufus Fanta, and on the right we have the Golden White Eye. We focus our project on the Rufus Fanta, mainly because we know that it's mostly uh, an insectivorous bird than the others, and also it was found in Saipan, it's native, and then it's not here on Guam. So our question to narrow it down is. Do insectivorous birds exert top-down control on understory foliage flying and flying insect abundances? We hypothesize that predators have a negative effect on prey abundances from our main question. And hypothesis for this question is that insectivorous birds exert top-down control on foliage, foliage dwelling and flying insect abundances. Okay, so basically, um, going back to our broader hypothesis, um, we hypothesize that birds as predators would have uh, an effect on insects. Uh, so they would regulate prey. So as birds decrease, insect abundance would increase. For our methods, the first thing that we did was to locate, locate a native car's limestone forest. And then we would set up a transit, which is displayed here, of 100 feet. And then at each 10 feet, we lay a bag in the middle and we sweep on either sides and then pour them into the bag. And so we take turns sweeping, beating, sweeping, beating all the way through. And we did that both on side and on bottom. Oh. Um, with this, we would sweep and beat the nearest foliage. So we wouldn't just sweep the air or anything. We would sweep and beat whatever is the closest bush to us. And it has to be at a height that we can the image on the right shows the where we will lay out the transit, and that's how it will look like. So on the side of, here, this slide shows the sites on Guam and Saipan, and these little red balloons here indicate the sites of that. At each of them, we laid two transits and collected ten samples from each one. And these were all native car signs, of course. After that, we would throw the bags into the freezer and leave them in for a, a little bit, and then throw them into determine the order and then comment from that. Okay, so for our results, we got that um, insect abundance
abundances were significantly different between walnuts and almonds. You kind of see that with this chart here. Number of individuals are right here per bag or per sample. I'm sorry. Um, on the bottom, you can see that we separated it into order. So we didn't try to identify two genus or species, but we did get that uh, Coleoptera was beetles, Diptera were flies, um, there were true bugs, uh, butterflies, moths, um, and then spiders aren't insects, so we put it as their own just, just to see because um, what we found from uh, one of the studies on the Rufus Mantel were that they actually eat, 4% of what they'll eat would be spiders, so we thought that it would be worthwhile to throw that in there. Um, and then this is just insects in general, so it's, insects is, are bees all grouped together. So what you see here in blue is Saipan, what's in red is Guam. And as you can see, there was a really large difference. Diptera flies was the biggest difference we found. Um, there were a lot of flies on Saipan in the forest compared to Guam. Um, and, and these are all just the averages as well. Other would be everything that isn't in these orders, because these are the orders that we found that the Rufus Fangtail eats the most insects from. Um, okay, so we ran t-tests and we found a significant difference uh, between insect abundance um, on Guam and Saipan. So our original question of do birds exert strong top-down control, top -down control um, well, we actually found that there was a positive relationship. So you saw that on Saipan, there were more insects, and that's where birds are. So it didn't confirm our hypothesis. It actually um, disproved our hypothesis, and we were very surprised. We had thought it would be pretty simple, where there are birds, there will be less insects, and it wasn't that way. Um, so we also attributed possibly to differences in, uh, in the karst limestone forest. Um, we noticed just through our observations of where we surveyed that the foliage was a little less dense, um, maybe a little less diverse, um, and that could be because it, there are more factors at play than just insects and birds. So that's what our original hypothesis was, and that's actually kind of what we <laughs> found out. <laughs> it's way more complex than we thought. So. There are the brown tree snake, of course, uh, that's a top predator, and then birds, the, and this is on the wall, of course. We had to account for ungulates, possibly making it less dense of the foliage. Uh, so there are spiders in there, maybe the spiders on Guam were very well adapted and, and made up for the absence of birds, um, and then insects and plants, so it was a really complicated food web that we thought was simple in the beginning. Um, so in summary, we found that the presence of insectivorous birds and maybe the absence of ungulates and other things in the forest re results in a positive relationship with insect abundance. Um, oh, shit, I'm sorry. That wasn't completely what I was going to shut with. Um, for future studies in this kind of field, um, it could be maybe on foliage density, where we could measure foliage on a branch and then from there get insect abundance. And that would be, would make our study a little more upcoming. It would narrow basically the food web. So we thought that could be a good direction. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to acknowledge all these wonderful institutions and all these wonderful people who helped us. Okay. You have any questions? <laughs>